So I'll be talking about chaos engineering, right? How you can build humidity in the production systems using chaos engineering. Actually, Gregor kind of uh, talked about chaos engineering a little bit uh, in his team of today morning. So I'll just you know, expand it more into what chaos engineering is, why do we need it, you know, tools and practices we need to adopt. So let's actually get started. So I'll start by uh, the definition of chaos engineering. Like what is chaos engineering? So there, there's a wonderful website, principlesofchaos.org, and this is the textbook the definition of chaos engineering. And you see a tool called Chaos Monkey. That's actually a tool Netflix originated with Chaos Engineering, and they have this tool called Chaos Monkey. So in a lot of books, you find this reference. But what chaos engineering essentially is, is that it's a live experimentation on your distributed system, right? And the goal of that experiment is basically to A, learn and understand what are the distributed system failure points and how to sort of give you a guideline on the areas that you can improve upon. Uh, that's what chaos engineering is uh, all about. And a common a common example of chaos engineering, I, I love this uh, example that, you know, when you're a kid, they give you vaccination. And what you're really, they're doing is they're actually infecting you with the virus or bacteria or whatever it is, right? And the goal is not as much as to infect you, but let your body develop the resistance. So, but actually, you have some disease like that, you can recover from it. Chaos engineering is kind of the same thing. It's actually injecting failures into your system to build resiliency. But before I actually expand on what chaos engineering is, I want to start with why we actually need it. So, you know, any text problem, they teach you about all sorts of testing, unit integration, security, etc. Etc. And typically, how it happens is that when you when you build your system and you put it in production, you've tested your components individually together. How the exhaustive right, in multiple ways. So the question then is, why do we need another form of testing? Well, with all these testing, this the focus of your uh, test is actually on your actual system, right? How it behaves. So there is one thing missing in all of these tests, which is what chaos engineering actually does. And that one thing is, how does system behave when it's actually running in an environment? So unit testing, even integration testing, their focus is on the code, not on the interaction between the code and the environment. So there are some nice examples, right? You see the traffic light and you test it thoroughly and everything works. And it's deployed in the production environment and see what happens. Right, it, it's basically useless. The same thing can be said about that cupboard drawer. So, what is important in actual systems, distributed systems, is that you need to test the system itself, and you need to test the environment on which that system operates. And that's super critical, and that's what chaos engineering mostly focuses on. So, the problem is that world is chaotic, right? I mean, we are operating at a large scale. You are deploying your applications in AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, whatever your cloud environment is. And things fail at scale, right? There are many moving parts of a distributed system. Your disk storage, things things can go wrong. There are a couple of examples here, right? Uh, hard disk fails, network goes down, etc., etc. Point is, the world is naturally chaotic. So you have to, there's nothing, there's no way you can actually prevent that chaos or not happening, but what you can do is to be prepared for it and know what to do when it actually happens. And that's what we're going to see how. So people tend to ignore the environment, right? I know. <clears throat> we, we deploy the application in AWS. It's AWS job to take care of all the environment works perfectly. Well, it is, but the problem is there are things that are beyond their control. Things happen. And you can't just ignore the environment, right? So when you test it, even if you have a staging environment, which is exactly a replica of production environment, there are differences and you have to take into account. So this common example of Mars rover, right? You're, you're putting this probe on Mars. So you, you make an assumption of this is how my environment is gonna look like. And you test, you know, like astronauts test for zero gravity on Earth, etc. You kind of simulate the environment on your local testing environment. But the problem is you have made a certain assumptions about the environment. This is how the environment are. How do you know 
that those assumptions are correct. I mean, you're making an assumption that fine, I'm uh, the network is reliable, is it? What happens if, if there's a network failure? The problem with the environment is environment is beyond your control. Once your application is, let's say, on AWS or whatever club, that's it. You can't control AWS, right? You can control your application, but you can't control your environment. So, environment is something that you should not ignore. 